Today we're making prickly pear cactus juice that we're going to use for a variety of things. This batch is going to be for paint. And prickly pear cactus, as you can see, produces this really great snotty green stuff, which is a good binder. And uh, basically what we did is we filled our mixer here with about two, 200, 250 paddles that we acquire very easily because it's a pretty invasive plant. And it grows here like a weed and everyone would be very happy in town if we came over and hacked down their prickly pear cactus. So that's what we do. We collect it locally. We do our neighbors uh, a service and we get this for free. So after driving, I don't know, mile and a half, two miles uh, with the mixer, which just has prickly pear cactus and some water, uh, we get this beautiful snotty green stuff. And right now we're just scooping out some of the chunks as a first step, and then we'll follow that up by um, picking the rest up with screens and screening out any of the remaining large material. What we'll wind up with from this batch is about 50, 60 gallons of cactus juice. And for each five gallon bucket, we'll add um, three or four scoops of lime. And that'll preserve it, prevent it from rotting and getting stinky. It keeps this the um, color nice and clear green. And to this, we can add pigment and make paint. And it has a nice antibacterial quality. And then we also add it to um, our paper paint mix. And what we observed when we made our papercrete fence is that if we have prickly in the mix, uh, we don't have to seal the end results. So we don't have to seal it with like an elastomeric paint to protect the paper from the weather and the rain. Um, it, the prickly acts as that, a sealant. So that's it. We're about to make some paint. We further filter out the big chunks. So I have here a bucket of prickly pear filter, homemade screen, and basically we're just going to pour it over. And shake out the goo and try to just get rid of the chunks. And then after we do this, we'll take this full bucket and run it through the strainer one more time just to make sure we don't have any big chunks in there. Uh, so today we're making paint and using our prickly pear cactus base. So the other day we strained out, we, we first put in our um, toe behind mixer about 300 paddles of prickly pear cactus and we broke it down with some water. And then we strained out all the chunks with um, diamond expanded metal lath. And what we wound up with was a nice syrupy snotty mix. However, there were still some little green gobules. So we... Uh, we wanted our paint to be really beautiful and smooth, like real paint. So we built this little frame with um, regular window screening. This is just some uh, metal screen that we had laying around from some trashed windows. So we screened it once again through here. We got out all the little globules and got a beautiful, clean, well-filtered mix. We then um, wanted to add color. So color and consistency and texture. So we added lime by the cup. And we got up to about 30 cups of lime using a Starbucks uh, Starbucks mug, uh, 30 mugs of lime when we started to finally get that really beautiful consistency. And at, at smaller amounts, we found the green of the prickly juice and the lime would seem uh, very separated. And you can see the, the white specks in the green mix. And then there was a sweet spot. So we kept adding lime till we found it. We blended it well with a uh, drill with a blender head. And then for our color, uh, we took some brown umber, which gave us this beautiful color, which we bought in a powdered form. And thanks to our friend Gavio, we knew to take the powdered umber and hydrate it in water and look for a pasty consistency. And he recommended um, an hour of hydration for umber. So for a, you know nearly an hour, rotating it in, rotating it in until you have no more specks of um, powder. And the reason for this is that when you put your paint on, those specks become little specks in the paint and you'll get like more of a polka dotted look. So we mixed up our umber and we then applied it to the bucket of lime and prickly pear. 
and we mixed and mixed and mixed until we got the color we liked and got this beautiful brown. But um, one thing to note is it dries much, much lighter than it looks. So I'll show you the test we did each time we added lime and umber to find the color we wanted. So every few cups of lime, we come out here with a paintbrush and just dab a bit on the dome. And the first, this was maybe five to 10 cups of lime, was almost transparent. We didn't really have any whiteness. And then we kept adding, this was about 25 cups of lime. And then we saw that going to 30 did not really produce much of a change. So we felt like that was the point of diminishing returns. And then we started to add our umber. And at first we wound up in the peachy zone, almost a skin color. And then we progressively added more, more, more. And we wound up liking this a little bit lighter than this. And so we just added umber accordingly until we found the color we liked. But when this went on, it was dark and they, it lightens quickly with the sun. We've been painting now for maybe an hour. And what we found so far is that the paint is a little on the thin side, but completely usable. It almost feels a little like ink. Um, it goes on really well in the areas that we have a lot of sun, like on the top of the dome, it seems to dry almost as it's going on. And um, it feels like we have to go back there and keep hitting the same area using uh, what feels like a lot more paint. Whereas in the shaded areas and on the lower parts of the dome, it seems like we can spread a little bit of paint a very long way. So we're not sure if that's because of the awkwardness of using a brush on top versus the powerful uh, arm action you get on the bottom. But anyway, it dries incredibly fast, and it's looking like our five gallon bucket of paint may very possibly be exactly the right amount to cover the exterior of this 75 square foot dome, just the outside. And that's it.